Good evening. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to worship with us here at the Daughter of Zion Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is Wednesday. It is our midweek prayer service, and we pray that your, our time spent in worship together will allow you to get beyond this moment we call hump day, whether it's a psychological barrier or a real experience, and a real experience that you're having. Uh, we know God is the supplier of our needs, and we pray that he will supply your needs to get you through whatever you're going through. So before we get started, I want you to do me a big favor. It's very important to us that many as possible see this message. And that can happen when you like, subscribe, and, to, and share this with others on your social media platforms. So please take the time now to like, subscribe, to share so you get the notification when we're doing uh, uh, future programming and also others on your timeline on your social media accounts will see um, a message embedded there that they too can have an opportunity to be blessed by. Let us have a word of prayer so that we can ask the Holy Spirit to come in and tabernacle with us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for the opportunity you've given us to worship you in prayer. We pray for an outpouring of your spirit, for uh, enlightenment, for instructions, and for guidance. Please forgive us for our many sins, and we pray, Lord, that when it's all said and, uh, said and done, that we give you all the praise and glory through your name. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I've entitled my message with you this evening, Title Clear. Title Clear. I want to begin by reading a familiar passage found in John, the 14th chapter, reading verses 1, 2, and 3. John, the 14th chapter, reading verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Again, the message is title, title clear, title clear. Some years back, I was involved in real estate investing and I had a number of properties that I you know, purchased for, uh, we say flipping, you buy a house, you rehab, you put it back on the market again. And some homes were used as rental properties. And Throughout the process of uh, what being engaged in this, uh, you know, you look for property and you identify something based on your criteria that you have, that I had, and you go forth if it does meet that, to purchase that property. Before that takes place, a title search is necessary. A title search is necessary. A title search is done to ensure that there's no claim to a property such as a lien, judgment, bankruptcy and determines ownership. Now I'm going to build on this. I want you to pay very close attention to the uh, definition. A uh, title search, search is done to ensure no claim to a pr property such as a lien, judgment, bankruptcy, and determines ownership. A title search really is an investigation into a matter to determine if it's safe to move forward. A title search is simply an investigation to a matter to determine if it's safe to move forward. Now, we do title searches all the time in real estate and outside of real estate. Real estate. If you go into a, 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 a nice restaurant, you don't do this for McDonald's and Wendy's, but if you decide to take your, a significant loved one or maybe it's Mother's Day or Father's Day, when you go into a nice restaurant, if you haven't been there before, you may go online and read reviews um, to see what others who are, had an experience that you're looking to have, how they liked it. And you will base your decision sometimes on some things that you have read. You do this as well with movies and vacations, whether you're traveling domestic or internationally to determine, you know, things that you need or what type of how to prepare for the trip and what you are likely to encounter. Encounter. Now, would you believe we do this with churches as well? You know, if you're moving into a new area or area, or you're visiting a particular area that you're not familiar with, you will go online 
to to see what area churches are there and see exactly what could be your experience there. And one of the main ones I I chuckled at is that title searches are done in relationships. Are done in relationships. You know, if you're single and you meet someone, one of the things you want to find out is is that person married? <laughs> Is that person married? You want to know if the title is going to come back, what? Clear. Uh, if the answer is, it's complicated, or, or I'm separated, or getting a divorce, then the title is not clear. And so you want to kind of move forward, or, uh, you know, what's they say? What do, what do they say it in, in, in playing Monopoly? You know, go past go. And don't collect two hundred dollars. You know, you just kind of want to get out of there as quickly as possible. I have discovered, you know, that women want a title. Women want a title. You see, guys, we can be terrible. We can date forever, and uh, but a woman want a title of fiance or a wife or Mister and Mrs. So and So. Women, you know how it is that uh, when you meet someone. And, you know, you will try on their last name to see how it sounds. You know, you know, it's like, OK, I can see myself with that. Or you may want to put in your your own last name and, and hyphenate it to make it sound better or, you know, for whatever reasons that you have in doing that. But you want that title. You don't you don't want to be an experience or caught up in a dating cycle where it's going nowhere. So it's necessary for there to be a title search and a title to come by clear, but also you want a title. It's not to say that men uh, wouldn't want that as well, but I would tilt the scale in favor of women who would be a proponent of wanting that more so uh, for good reason, of course. And so we do title searches all the time. Uh, uh, Beyonce had a song that she uh, came out with years ago um, about single ladies. Single ladies, you say, well, where are all my single ladies? And and a part of the song um, would go on with the chorus. It says, if you like it, you should have put a ring on it. Meaning you should have claimed me. If you like it, you should have put a ring on it. And that's what we find, our, where we find ourselves um, in this spiritual uh, um, title search where someone has done a title search and has Offered to put a ring on it to show that who's uh, ownership or who you belongs who you belong to. Now, title search is uh, is done when you have decided to purchase a property. It's on is done only when you decide to purchase a property. You don't do a title search when you're going uh, through a, a a walkthrough or when you're just looking. But when you have identified something that you want, it's necessary to put down your earnest money. It's necessary to indicate to the realtor and to the seller that you want to buy that property. And then you will um, pay the closing costs or the title search company will pay the, uh, will do a title search to determine if there's any judgment lien or bankruptcy or who the rightful owner is of that property. Imagine paying money for something to someone and they don't even know it. So it's necessary for the title search to be done once you have decided to purchase a property. Uh, uh, John understood this. Uh, uh, well, Christ, Christ in the triune council with God the Father and God the Holy Ghost uh, decided that he would die for man. John says, behold, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. You see, when man sinned, Satan became the prince of this world and had a title over man. Once an offer to purchase a property or redeem man was made, then a title search to determine who had legal right was necessary. You see, title search are, 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 are paid at closing where you pay the, what we call the closing fees along with the property. So all the, the fees that are, are tied up in the acquisition of a property is paid at closing. And part of those fees is the title search fees. You see, 
when I bought several properties, I met at a title company's office or at a mortgage company office or at an attorney's office uh, where we, where they, when they invite you in, they will offer you something to drink and maybe a bagel or donut if it's available. And they want to get you as comfortable as, pro uh, as, as possible because you're going to be there a while. You're going to be there a while. It's not as simple where you just give your John Hancock and, and move forward. It's to get to a point where you just want to give up. Uh, but you decided that you want to buy this property and you go ahead and, and sign an initial. They say initial here, initial here, sign here. And it's pages after pages after pages. And although they're explaining uh, each uh, the significance of each legal document, it's like blah, blah, blah. It's going in one ear and coming out the other. Because all you want to do is get through this closing process so that you can get the keys and go back um, and enjoy the property that you, that you purchased. So you go through this process of signing document after document. And they want to make sure before you begin that you're comfortable um, because it's going to be a lengthy process. And we find that spiritually this happened at well at Calvary. You see, uh, Christ told the, 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 the disciples and others, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will build it, rebuild it. He let, he let them know that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and priests and be killed. And be killed. And after three days, after three days, rise again. Uh, closing is a process. Uh, they offer Christ a uh, drink on the, uh, 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 on the cross. Uh, they offer him uh, um, gall and vinegar mix. Uh, and they they knew that he was going to be there a while. You see, closing is a process. And when they crucify someone, they hung them on a cross as a as a pub uh, for public mockery and shame. And towards the end of the day, after they had hung there for hours, they would go through and break uh, the 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 malefactor legs to uh, expedite death. But they wanted you to hang there for a, a while. And here Christ was, he said, he said, destroy this temple in three days and I will rebuild it. And he tells them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and priests and be killed. And after three days, rise again. You see, closing is a process. And, and while you're there at the closing, there are many documents to sign. There are many a document to sign where you're going to initial, 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 and sign. You see, Christ had many documents or prophecies, get this, or prophecies to fulfill. Uh, Zechariah 13, 7 lets us know that God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Uh, or you find recording that Isaiah 53, 7, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Psalms 22, 16. My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs and an evil gang closes in on me. They have pierced my hand and feet. Isaiah 50 uh, verse 6. I have offered my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. And I hid not my face for mockery and spitting. Psalm 69 21. Uh, they gave me also gall for my meat and vinegar. In my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Psalms twenty two eighteen. 18. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Isaiah 53, 12. He was numbered with the transgressors. Amos 8, verse 8 and Amos 8 and 9. The 8th chapter, verse 9. And it shall come to pass. And that day said the Lord, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. John 19.36 says, For all these things came to pass that the scripture might be fulfilled.
a bone of him shall not be broken. You see, so the documents that Christ had to sign on the cross was prophecy. He initialed here. He initialed, he initialed, and then he signed in, in, in blood with his finger, sealing the closing process. Closing is a process, and all the, the New Testament writers and, and prophets wrote about the experience that Christ was going to have to endure on the cross or on his way to Calvary. But he initialed each and every one of them. John 19, 36 says, All these things came to pass that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, I got some good news for you here. I got some good news. You see, while closing is a process, you get your key, you get your keys at closing. They never hand you the keys to a property when you do a walkthrough. You don't get to view a, prop, a property and they give you the keys and say, here, it's yours. All because you want it. But when you go through this process, at the end of this closing process, you get the keys. You see, I remember uh, um, having um, buying my first property and buying several properties after that. You go through this closing process, but you know that it's done for a reason so that you can get the keys and that you can start this process of ownership where you're going to have to pay the mortgage to rightfully claim it as totally, totally your own. But you do get the keys at closing. And, and here uh, 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 we find that Christ says destroy this temple in three days. And after the three days, I will rebuild it. You see, Calvary was the closing office. Uh, somebody don't hear me. Calvary was the closing office. And the cross was the table where he sent all the documents and paid the closing costs. I said the fees for the, uh, uh, the title search is paid at closing, and he paid it on the cross. But he didn't have the keys to death, hell, and the grave just yet. But he said, destroy this temple, and in three days, <laughs> I will rebuild it. And it's after the third day that he got, on the third day that he got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And it said, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is that victory? You see, Christ had the keys to the property. And he lets us know that you were bought, you were brought with a price. That you're not your own. Christ paid the penalty for your sins and my sins. And he had to go through this public mockery called a crucifixion where he hung on the cross and he died for your sins and my sins. And it lets us know that you no longer belong to the prince of this world. You are bought with a price. You are not your own. The prince of this world can, they, can, can lay no claim to you. You are brought with a price. Oh, I like the song, this song by uh, uh, Wanda Lott when she sang, I got a home up in that kingdom. Ain't of that good news. See, Christ had told the disciples, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. So let us uh, uh, do this uh, Wednesday night prayer service on this hump day. Uh, take uh, uh, and get excited by the fact that I got a home <laughs> up in that kingdom. Ain't of that good news. You see, the slave couldn't claim rights to property. They never would. I got the keys. They were only, at best, sharecroppers. But through this song uh, that was a part of uh, this slavery experience, uh, 
Uh, the song goes, I got a home up in that kingdom. And um, why I want to be an owner down here, I will get the keys to this kingdom up in glory. I got a home up in that kingdom. <laughs> Ain't that a good news? I'm going to lay down this world and shoulder up my cross. I'm going to take it home to my Jesus. Ain't that a good news? You see, many of us have wondered and laid up at night, wondering how we're going to pay the bills. And, and maybe you have faced eviction and, and foreclosure. And maybe you find yourself on the outside of that home ownership experience. But I want to let you know that you got a home up in that kingdom. There'll be no more mortgage or, or, or rent to pay. Uh, there won't be uh, uh, the threat of foreclosure. The title is clear. Whoo! The title is clear. I got a home up in that kingdom. Ain't that um, good news? But understand this. I said before, a title search is an investigation into a matter to determine if it's safe to move forward. See, Christ, after 1844, donned his priestly garments and went into what we call the investigative judgment, where he's doing a title search of your life and mine to determine if it's safe to move forward, to bring you here back to his father's house. Will you be cussing and fussing there? Will you be stealing and killing? And so this investigation, this title search, is taking place called the investigative judgment to determine if it's safe to move forward with you as a citizen of his kingdom. You see, a title search company goes to the courts to see if any judgments leans a bankruptcy is filed against a property. Jesus is searching the books in the courts of heaven to see if there's any judgments or lien against your life or mine. When we face with temptation, did Willie give in to his lusts or to his passions, whereby there's a judgment against him? Is his life bankrupt of, uh, of study? prayer and witnessing is there a future debt or lien against him because he didn't ask for for forgiveness or grant someone else forgiveness jesus is doing the investigative judgment the title search to see if the title will come back clear to determine if it's safe to move forward with you as a citizen in his kingdom. He said, I go away to prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be also. I'm reminded uh, of a psalm saying by uh, Chris and Nivia Willis and also Dynamic Praise and others talking about a better day after a while. You see, a better day after a while. There's going to be a better day. I don't care about your experience now. I don't care about your hardships and and, and, and troubles that you're facing now, your sickness or your illness, or whether people like you or not. Just understand, as one that lot says, ain't it that good news, but there's going to be a better day <laughs> after a while. A better day after a while, uh, where you can trade all your troubles in for a lifetime of smiles. And uh, I, I guarantee you're going to forget how hard it was to run these last few miles. And, and then when Jesus says to me, welcome home, my child, all the bitter heartaches here will surely be worthwhile. A better day after a while. There's going to be a better day after a while. Oh, the son takes it up a notch and it says, I'm going to ride on the rainbow road uh, Travel on a Milky Way. And because the title is clear, she said, I'm going to live in a home where there is no more rent to pay, or no more snow and no more rain. Long live a sunny day. Lord, I pray 
for the coming of a day when I can fly away. Why? Because there's going to be a better day after a while. A better day, my child. Whoo! There's going to be a better day after a while. I know you're facing some hardships and some trials and some difficulties. And I said earlier in a relationship that people want a title. And then in this relationship with God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost, God gives us a title. We are called sons and priests, sons of God, priests and king. We, he lets us know that we are a royal priesthood, a chosen people. Our Revelation uh, 2.17 lets us know that he's going to give us a new name written on a white stone. You see, the title has come back clear. And he says, he lets us know that we're our sons and daughters of the king. Uh, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. But it's time for us to start living like that. Let us forsake the hardships or, or let us forsake the pleasures and the, and, 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 and the, the entrapping of this world that will get you nowhere. I want it to be said at the end of this title search what Christ says can say to me and to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. The title has come by clear into ye, into the joy of your Lord. Let us buy his. The God have we thank you, Lord, for again, for um, blessing us. We thank you, Lord, for what we've seen, witnessing her and heard. We pray, Lord, for those who are going through an experience that they will cling to you, that they will not lose hope and faith. And we pray that this message will resonate with them, that will find strength in time of do and, and, and meet in due season. Forgive us, bless us, and keep us. In your wonderful name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank again for joining us for our midweek prayer service. May the Lord of heaven continue to be with you and guide you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.